Hey everyone, this is Sabun Sharma here and I'm back with a new series and in this series we'll be working on Laravel Splade. So if you are unaware about Laravel Splade, then so Laravel Splade is a relatively new tool and it provides a super easy way to build single page applications using the power and DX of Laravel Blade. So this uses uh, renderless view components under the hood. So you can go ahead and check out the blog written by Adam. So you can uh, get an idea about how this works. And there's also a documentation about that somewhere in here. So how Splayed works, you can go ahead and check that out. So in this introductory video, we'll be working on a simple CRUD app. And later we'll also implement roles and permissions in, in the app itself. And there's also a relatively new uh, development going on in here called uh, bridge components. So with this, uh, what we can do is we can actually use the PHP uh, properties and methods uh, from uh, the blade and call them from the blade itself. So this is also an interesting thing that's uh, coming up. So we'll be exploring this once this uh, gets a bit mature and let's see what I can implement with this. So for now, we'll be looking into just the introduction about Splade. And so before moving on to the demo part, I want to introduce you to a set of components called LiveWire Demos. So as you can see, we have a set of components which are developed for various kinds of categories like alerts, avatars, buttons, charts. So yeah, you can go ahead and check these out. So these are all built on all stack. Uh, some of them are using bootstrap, I guess. So to give you an overview, let's check out the comments component. And so we can check out a comment with replies using Tailwind CSS and LiveWire. And it consists of a simple comment with uh, nesting as well. So implementing these kind of features yourself uh, will take some time. So understanding these situations we have implemented uh, these components and they are all ready made to be implemented in your projects so you can uh, go ahead and check these components and if you like them then you can buy it and if you buy it from uh, my referral link then you would also support me so that would be a win-win situation for both of us because you are also getting these components and on my side i am also getting uh, supported for my works so that would be a win-win situation and even i am also involved in developing these components so yeah that's a good thing and that's the reason i am affiliated to it so i'll be linking the components link in the description below and you can go ahead and check them out and if you like them then you can definitely buy it and use it in your projects so that's it for the components part and let's now move to the demo part so here we have a simple dashboards so this is using the starter kit provided by splayed so we'll be using breeze for this and we have a students menu here so inside the students menu we are displaying the student record so this table that you see here is a table component provided by splayed and it offers other features as well like bulk actions so we can select these and then perform these um, bulk actions in here like excel export and deleting records and it also provides filters so you can filter these by certain conditions and it also has okay what else do we have okay it also has search features so yeah we'll be exploring these um while we implement this and if i click on create student then as you can see we are displaying this slide over component so this is also provided by split itself and we'll be also working with file uploads so Yep. we'll be looking into that as well and we'll also work on editing these records and populating the records automatically for the edit page and okay we also will work on deleting these records so confirmation dialogues and all the other stuff and once we are done with this we will implement the roles and permissions so adding roles and then implementing the permissions for these roles and all the uh, basic stuff that you already know so we'll be implementing this crud and also implement the authorization checks on both front end and back end so yeah we'll be uh, getting an overview and i'll definitely learn a lot of stuff along the way okay so that's it for this part and in the next part we'll start by setting up the project and then work on the remaining stuff as we go along so that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one so in this video, we'll be looking at installing and setting up Splade and also install the Breeze version of Splade. 
and set everything up and in the further videos we'll be looking at setting up the database migrations and all the other stuff so let's start by creating a new laravel project so in my desktop i'm going to create a new project and i'm going to name it splayed and i'll be right back once this finishes installing okay so the laravel project has been installed and let me just cd into that project and let's also open that in my code editor and what else do we have okay i also have a database defined called splayed so let me just set that up and i also need to zoom in a bit so that you can see it properly okay so the db database is splayed and what else do we have okay i'll also set this up uh, in my git repository and later you can check the code okay so i have also pushed the code in the github so that you can later uh, take references from here and the next step that i want to do here is to install splayed and set up the uh, breeze version of splayed as well so let's go ahead and install the package first so i'm going to do that in my terminal so composer require proton media laravel splayed and while that is installing i'll copy this command to install the splayed and we also need to run the npm server so that it builds the asset assets um, while we are developing and okay that has been done so let's go ahead and okay it's not this actually but artisan blade okay i think it's called splayed install so artisan splayed install install is gonna set the package for us so let me just so i'll be right back once this is done okay so before we run the npm run dev what i want to do is i also want to install the breeze so laravel uh, splayed breeze so we have actually multiple options here so by the time i am recording this video the just stream version is also available but i want to install the breeze because for simplicity and i am not doing any complex or anything uh, 2f related stuff or team related stuff so for that reason i'm going to install breeze so let me just copy this command and paste that in my terminal so this is okay this is also building the assets okay so the assets have been built let me just clear it up and also install the breeze blade package of breeze so while that is installing and so we also need to run the breeze install command okay so the package has been installed uh, let me also run the breeze install command and i'll be right back once this finishes installing okay so the breeze install command has executed successfully and let's also run the npm run dev command so that the assets are built once uh, whenever we change any files and what else do we have okay we have already set up the database so let's go ahead and migrate and okay this is zoomed out so let's run the php artisan solve command and i also need one more to run the migrations and all the other stuff so let's go ahead and run the migrations so that's done and our breeze package has also been installed successfully so let's go ahead and check that out so okay, let's go ahead and try to register because we don't have a user right now so i'm going to create uh, an, an admin user with an email of admin and the password is going to be password and let's hit enter so okay this is the default uh, page uh, so this is actually the breeze page that you see so everything is all default with the official breeze version so this looks good and in the next part we'll be looking at setting up the migrations factories and seeders so we'll be defining a crud for, for students and each student belongs to a certain class and section so we'll be looking at setting up those relationships and all this stuff in the next video so i'll see you guys in the next one okay so before setting up uh, the migrations and database and all the other stuff i want to give you a brief overview about the database structure so we are going to have a student model and so just the basic stuff so a student is gonna belong to a certain class in id and a class has properties like id and name so you can add the other fields as for your needs but i'm gonna keep it simple and a section belongs to a certain class and it also has a name so other than that we have name email address and phone number 
okay maybe i don't want to keep address because we don't actually need these this, since i'm only using for demo purposes so we'll be having name email and phone number and yep that's the basic structure for the database and instead of uh, manually creating all of this stuff what i am gonna do is i'll just copy and paste the models and migrations and factories and and i'll explain to you because these are quite simple things and if you are watching this video that means you are already familiar with laravel ecosystem and defining the models and migrations are the basic stuff that we have, uh, we deal with all the time in laravel so for that reason i'm gonna just uh, give you an overview and skip the creation and setting up the setting part so for that what i am gonna do is okay so as mentioned earlier we are gonna have three models one is gonna be the classes model the other one is gonna be section and the main student model so setting up the relationships and everything is done in here as you can see so we have a class relationship and a section relationship and it belongs to a certain class and section and section also belongs to a certain class and it has many students so this has relationships and all the other stuff are, are already done and the next thing that i want to do is i want to paste the migration files so here as well we are going to have three files for three tables for the three models and okay what else do we have we also need the factories so a factory for each of the models and we also need a seeder so i'll just copy and paste that seeder and walk you through the code step by step and explain to you what it does okay so let's check out the classes seeder and here we have we are calling the classes factory and we are providing it a count of 10 so we'll be creating 10 classes and we have a function called sequence so what this is going to do is it's going to loop over each of the class factory that you are defining so in this case since we are defining 10 classes it's going to loop over each of them so it's like a for each loop and for each of the sequence what it is going to do is it's going to is it's going to update the name attribute so the name attribute is going to be class and then space and then sequence sequence index plus one so this sequence starts from uh, zero index uh, just like in for loops so the first is going to be zero plus one so the name is going to be class and then one and just like that the all the other classes are going to have the sequence from class one to ten and the has is the relationship that we are providing to it so each class has a section and okay has many sections actually and in this case what we are doing is we are going to create two class two sections for a single class and we are providing a function called state so the state is going to be applied to each of the sections as well and to the state we are providing a new sequence so what sequence does is it will apply these attributes one by one so let's say uh, we are pro since we are creating two sections so for the first section it is going to apply this value and for the second section it is going to apply this value so let's say we have we had four sections and in that case for the third section it would again apply this section a value and then section b so the sequence is going to be applied to each of the values that we iterate through so let's restore the count to two and so for each section again we are providing a has function so a relationship and for each section we are going to define five students and for each of the students we are again providing the state function and to the state function what we are doing is we are passing in the attributes and also passing in the section that we just defined in here so from the sections factory so that section is gonna be passed in here and from that section what we are doing is we are applying the class id from the relationship provided by section so the class id that this section has is going to be applied to this student factory okay so that's it that's everything this factory class is doing here and at the end we are calling the create method so that's the flow and let's go ahead and first migrate the migration files and then we'll also run the seeder so let me just remove the 
sidebar and what I am going to do is let's just call artisan migrate fresh and then seed. And okay, we also need to do one more thing that is in the database seeder. So in the database seeder, we are not executing anything. So here what we are going to do is we are going to call the classes seeder and that in turn is going to call the all the factories and everything. Okay, let's save the database seeder and finally call the artisan migrate fresh and then seed command and okay it is it migrated the files and then also run the classes seeder so let's go ahead and check out our database and see whether everything was migrated or seeded successfully okay so we have a classes table and class 1 to 10 each with the id of 1 to 10 and we also have sections and each section a and b so for class 1 class id of 1 the section a and b are defined and class 2 section a and b and so on so this thing is also working fine and lastly we have the students model so inside students we have a total of 100 so as expected and class 1 section id 1 and class 1 section id 1 okay for we were defining actually five records for a certain section so this looks good okay so that's it for this part and in the next part we'll be looking at okay displaying the data so we'll be using the table component provided by splayed and display the data in the front end so let's go ahead and do that okay so it's now time to display the data to the front end so we'll be creating a link and then displaying the data on a table so for that we have a table component and you can also check this video it's really good and you'll get to know a lot of stuff from stuff from here as well so there are actually two ways to render the table component and and then pass in the data so one is going to be a basic example so if you have a simple table then in that case you can use this basic table class otherwise we have a dedicated table class and we are going to use this for this tutorial so let's go ahead and create so for this we are what we are going to do is we are going to define a dedicated table class and define all the configs and all the other stuff needed for this specific class in this class itself and then we can pass that wherever we want so let's go ahead and do that so in my controller okay in my terminal i'll just paste that command and the name for our table is gonna be students and let's go ahead to that students table and okay there are some things that are gonna be populated itself so authorize is gonna be true so this is uh, true by default we can actually replace this thing with auth check for now so any uh, unauthenticated users cannot access our table okay so for the student query and i guess the student model is also imported for us and what else do we have okay so here we have some basic things configured so the width global search is something that is the name itself says so the global search feature is uh, gonna search for the id and let's also add some new columns in here so i want to add name email and okay we also have phone number so let's also add that so whenever we type in this column or the search field then it is going to search through these fields from the student's query and we also have the column and the sortable is true so let me just go ahead and copy duplicate this thing and then we'll display all the other data so the one uh, other is going to be the name property and let me also remove this sortable property because you probably have got an idea what this does so basically sorts lets the user sort the table so what else do we have okay we also have email we also have phone number and okay let's save this and see how this looks like and we'll add more features later okay let's also add the colon or semicolon what do we call it i'm not sure okay so how do we render this thing so to render that what we do is we return the view and then pass in the users table class with this value so this is the key and the value is going to be the user stable class so let's go ahead and create a new controller artisan make controller student controller and let's also define a new route inside web.php let me remove these 
comments let's also sort the imports and okay we have the default route provided by breeze so don't remove any of these because these are required for uploading and table rendering the tables and all the other stuff so here we are going to define that route so let me uh, i'm going to define a resourceful route because we might need it for other stuff as well and the controller is going to be app HTTP controller student controller class okay that looks good so we can oh, okay we can actually go to that class and let's define that index method and okay what are we going to do in here so we are going to return a view students.index we haven't defined this file yet so the next step is to pass the students data so the key is going to be students and the value is going to be the students table class okay that's it that's the only thing we need to, we need to do on the controller side so let's go ahead to the file manager and inside views let's create a new folder and inside that students folder let's create the index dot blade.php and okay what are we going to do here so what i'll do is i'll just copy the content from dashboard because we can use the existing app layout the authenticated app layout and we can customize this as per our needs so let me just paste that in here and the name is going to be header is going to be students list and okay let me remove this part and what we want to do here is we want to render the students table so we can do that by passing in the x plate table component so this is basically a blade component and inside this blade component the blade actually pro passes in the table component and all the other props so we are passing in the users prop to this blade component and then that users prop is in in turn passed to the view component and that's how split actually works so we are also passing in a empty state slot so in case there are in case of uh, in case uh, when there are no any records and we'll just display this so you can override this as per your needs so instead of users what we want to do is we want to pass in the students record so let's save that and let's go ahead and load and see how it looks like okay we can't reload actually so we need to go to the students route so i'll just add the route in a minute let's first see how it looks like okay we have all the data displayed so for right now we are not paginating so because of that all of the data are displayed and let's try to search for by search or record by phone number so i'm gonna type 681 and as you can see the search feature is also working fine okay so what i want to do now is i also want to implement the pagination right now so inside the so all the pagination inquiry and searching on and, and all the other stuff what we where do we do is inside these tables class so here so this is the query so this builds up the query so if you want to filter out some data by uh, let's say a certain use case that if you want to filter out the data depending on a certain permission or role then you want to implement that here and that in turn is going to be passed to this configure method so this data will be displayed as per the configuration from here so what i want to do here is i, want, I also want to call the paginate method in here so we don't have to pass anything in here the default configuration is fine so let's go ahead and reload okay we also need to remove the filters so we have a reset function in here so now as you can see we are displaying 15 records and we also have some default values in here you can change that change these default values you can check on the uh, documentation for that so i guess it's inside this overview table itself okay from where here you can check that out and the pagination also works fine so i also want to do one thing i want to add a link in here for the students so let's go ahead and do that so where is that actually implemented so inside components there's a nav okay navigation so let's go ahead and copy okay not documentation but home okay this is dashboard but we are seeing home in here okay let's go ahead and check out the app layout 
so layouts app dot blade okay we have the navigation in here so this is the one actually being used so let's go ahead and copy this nav link so this is also a component and the href tag is going to be students dot index and we also get the id auto completion so that's really good and request route is students dot index and this is gonna be students okay let me also fix that spelling let's save and let's go ahead and reload okay this is taking some time okay the active navigation active link is also working fine and the link is also working fine okay so that's it we are displaying the data on it and also we have one property in here so whether you want to toggle these uh, visibility of these columns or not so that's also possible and that's it for this part and in the next part we'll be looking at creating the data we will be using the slide over component to display a form and then save the data so that's it for this part and i'll see you guys in the next one okay so it's now time to work on storing the student's record so for that let's start by adding a button so clicking on that button will open up a new slide of a component and that and in there we are gonna define populate the page with the form and all the other stuff so let's start by creating a new button so inside the index.blade so here we want to display that button so above the explate table what i want to do is okay let's start by first taking out the documentation so here we have some components defined for us so one of them is link component so we can pass in a lot of stuff to these so okay so what i want to do here is okay, we can actually simply define a link component and the auto generated code looks good let's see how it looks like in design okay this looks pretty bad so what i want to do is instead of passing in these classes I'm going to pass in my own custom uh, Tilden classes so you can check them out later. And okay, what this is actually doing is it is passing in an A tag. So instead of that, we can define these classes in the link component itself. So maybe that's the reason why the design looked so bad. So let's go ahead and pass in that class attribute and let's reload okay now it looks a bit better let's also add in a margin bottom of five okay this design is not reloading okay now it looks good so so when we click on this link what we want to do is we want to open up our slide over model and in there we are going to display the form so for that what we can do is we can pass in an attribute called slide over and okay, we have that somewhere in here i guess preloaded content okay we don't have that okay let's go ahead and search for it slide over explain model component okay okay yeah we can pass in the slide over to this and then this will open up as a slide over component so let's go ahead and paste that and we haven't defined the view so on clicking on on going to this route what you want to do is we want to display a new view so let's go ahead and define a new view inside the students. So I'm going to name it create.blade.php. And what do we want to do in here? Okay, we need to return that view from the controller. So let's go ahead and define that create method. And let's return that view students.create. And let's see what do we have inside view. Okay, we don't have anything. So let's see how this looks like and then we'll work on other stuff okay this doesn't actually display anything let's see the console whether we have any errors okay we don't have anything so the page is empty so for that reason we are not seeing anything so let's go ahead and populate this form so for that what i am gonna do is i'm gonna add some form fields so let's go ahead and check out the form components okay not form components actually but okay we have the form in here so explain form action is going to be this okay let's go ahead and okay so we have a form components page in here so that's inside oh yeah we have a dedicated page actually i didn't see that 
so we can use the form components to define our form so by default it comes with checkbox file group input radio select submit and text area so let's go ahead and copy this thing and we can customize this as per our needs so let's go ahead and paste that explain form input one is gonna be name so let me also copy this thing and i want one for the name let's also update the placeholder or label and the one is gonna be email let's also pass in the type i think we can pass type attribute explain input name okay we don't need this we also have one for phone number so let's also go ahead and define that and by the way we also have an avatar form field so we'll uh, deal with that later for now i only want to uh, give you an overview of the form component and later we'll deal with the file uploading files and all the other stuff so okay we have phone number we have okay the type is gonna be okay let's keep it as text because we can also have the plus and all the other symbols for numbers so the name is gonna be phone number okay let's see we can also pass in the actions for this so we'll look into that in a while but let's start by checking out the design how it looks like so let's click on create and we don't see anything what could be the issue in here we don't have any problems in here but okay let's see in the index let's go into the students or create okay i think we should reload it once let's click on create and we don't see anything okay so i did a bit of research and to display the content inside the in the slide over what we need to do is we need to wrap that inside a modal component so what i am going to do is i'll just copy this code and wrap that in our model so we only have a simple form so we need to wrap that inside the splayed model component so let's go ahead and define that closing tag and let's see if this thing works and we'll fix the issues accordingly okay let's click on create and as you can see now we have that model component displayed so let's also go ahead and add in some classes for the margin so the class is gonna be margin top of five let's go ahead and test it out once again and okay this looks good so we have an h1 but still it doesn't look so good but i think that's fine we can define some classes for this so the design part i'm not gonna look into it so much it's all up to you how you want to design it i just wanted to give you a brief overview okay okay that looks good yeah i won't be working with the design part so much and since uh it all since play also comes with the built-in components design and tailwind so you don't have to design uh, much of the stuff yourself okay so let's start by defining the actions and let's actually implement the storing part so for that what we can do is inside the form component we can pass in an action so this thing is covered inside the form component in the component section so here we can pass in an action so let's go ahead and do that so explain model the action is gonna be okay maybe we can pass in the blade components so route students dot store and let's also work on validation part so inside student controller we want to implement some validation so let's go ahead and define a new request call store student request and let's go ahead and import that here and let's define some validations so the validation that i saw the authorization what i'm going to do is i'm just going to implement a simple auth here so that any unauthenticated users cannot make or store the data and for the validation rules we have a simple name which is required string and max 225 we also have email so the validations are required string email max 255 unique to students that that's good we also have phone number okay and okay we also have class id and section ids right so maybe we should also work on that so for now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna implement it in a simple way so we might look into the implementing the dependent drop downs and all the other stuff later but in this video i'm gonna implement it in a simple way so let's go ahead and do that 
So what we want to achieve here is while creating the student data, okay, this action is unauthorized. Maybe we haven't saved that. So let's go ahead and now create the student and we should see the form and this thing is lagging. Okay, so I actually implemented this in the create method. So this should be in the store method actually. Okay, so now let's go ahead and display and see whether the form is displayed. Okay, so what I want to do here is beside these forms, I also want to display a select component, which is going to display the class and section and the user can select any of the value and then create the student data. But let's also add in some margins in here in the form or okay, create form let's add in some classes margin bottom of five okay this looks a bit better so we also have a select component so let's go ahead and define that select where's that okay here it is so x split select the name is can be defined and also we can pass in the options so what i am gonna do is we can also pass in the values as slots so i'm going to do this actually and let me just copy this code and paste that in here the name is going to be section id and later we'll grab the class id for this section as well and the options let's loop over the options so for each sections as section what i want to do here is i want to display an option with a value of section id and the label is going to be section class name and then dash section name. So we don't have these values in here. So we need to pass that from the controller. So in the student controller, let's go ahead and do that. So sections is going to be section with class get and let's pass in okay we also need to import that and let's pass the sections data okay let's test this out create student and okay we can see the students data displayed in here so what i also want to do is i want to display a select a section label on top of this so a default value so the value is going to be empty but you want to display a select a section kind of placeholder so that this would be selected by default so let's go ahead and what do you say okay selected so let's test this out and now we can select any of the sections so class one section a let's also provide some spacing in here and this should look good now okay let's define that in a new line and okay now what we can do is inside the section id we can also validate the section id so required exist in the sections table so the validation are going to be applied automatically so let's go ahead and try to create a new student and as you can see if there are any validation errors then they are applied automatically so that's really good so what else do we have in here okay let's implement the store part so student is gonna be student create maybe we can use the request validated part but what we also want to do here is we also need to store the we also want to store the class id okay so we can actually do is we can merge two of the values so instead of section id what i want to do is i want to display i want to store the class id and the class id is going to come from request okay we also we need to grab the section first so let's get this section from the database so section find the field request section id and the class id is going to be from the section id sections class id so let's return redirect route to students.index with a message of student created successfully and okay we haven't looked into toast for now so we'll be looking at that later so we are just keeping this for now and that will be applied automatically later so let's go ahead and test this thing and we'll fix any issues we face so let's add some data some 
mail at the rate gmail.com section is class one section a let's click on submit and we are redirected to the index page so we do have 101 results so this means that our data was stored successfully so let's okay we already have reached the last page and as you can see the data that we added has been stored successfully to the database so that's it for this video and in the next part we will be looking at editing the data so we'll be on click on edit when the user clicks on the edit button then we'll open the slide over form and then we'll also populate the data for that specific record so let's go ahead and do that okay so now it's time to work on the edit functionality and for that we will be needing a new column in here so we'll define an actions column and inside that we'll be displaying two links so one is going to be edit so one is going to be edit and the other one is going to be delete so let's go ahead and see how we can add that uh, add those links in here so inside the table component we have a section for built-in query builder and here we have uh, an example table table setup for us and what this is doing is it is passing a column for actions so let me just copy that and paste that in my students table okay let me just zoom this a bit so after a phone number what i want to do is i want to display the actions column and what do i want to do here so if we go ahead and check this out now we will see an empty table in here so empty column and to display the links what we can do is we can filter that out we can populate that data in the in the blade file itself so the actions that we provide as the label is going to be used in here okay so let's try this out so i'm going to copy this code and paste that in my index.blade so after inside the x split table i want to place paste that in here and the name is going to be actions and the link that i want to go to is route students dot edit and let's also pass in that student id okay we don't have that student id for now so what we can do is okay so by default we have an item variable and we can change that as per our needs so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change that to a student name because we are representing a student so as student is going to internally rename the variable to student and now we can call that by the student variable so this should be displayed as a link with a value of edit and that should go to the edit page so let's save this and let's try this reload and now as you can see this route is going to student slash id and then edit so this thing is now working and the next step that i want to do is define the view for this so let's go ahead and do that okay this should be similar to the create page so let's go ahead and do the create the edit.blade.php and i'm just gonna copy the create page content and paste that in here and we can reference that user and let's also display the name of the student so we will get that record as student and name so the route is going to be students.update and we also need to pass that record okay what else do we have in here okay we have that explain model okay okay this thing works so we are passing that action to the model itself and that also works so i found that out just now so we can either pass this thing to the form or the model so let's try and see if this thing works or not so inside the form i want to pass that action and we have that edit user and okay let's go ahead and see when i click on edit okay method student controller edit does not exist because we haven't defined that function so let's go ahead and do that edit and we are going to use the root model binding and let's return that view students.edit compact student okay should work 
so let's reload it once and click on edit okay we got this undefined variable sections because we also need to pass that value so let's go ahead and pass that to the edit page and let's also pass that here so sections and reload one last time okay let's click on edit and now we are redirected to an edit page but it's not slide over model so this thing didn't work out okay we need to update the link to use the slide over model so link slide over and now let's go ahead and try this thing let's click on edit okay now we are we can see the form and we also get the user's name in here so how do we populate this form so for that what we can do is we can pass the value we can actually pass the model model to the form and okay where was that i saw that somewhere just now but i forgot where it was okay this is the table component form okay here we have that yep we can pass that default model or the uh, to the form itself so what i'll do is i'll just copy this code and then in our case what we want to do is we want to pass the student model to the form so we can pass that okay let's create a separate line so that we can read this properly and the default is going to be student and it's going to take care of the binding and all the other stuff we don't have to deal with all, uh, anything of that kind in here so let's try once again okay we are redirected to the edit page okay this uh, this works fine now so all the data is populated automatically so you need to keep in mind that the form value and the models property are same otherwise this won't work so i think we can customize that behavior so if we go ahead and check out so since we are passing the email as uh, inside the name attribute so this value is going to be used so user.email and the name attribute are going to be binded to each other so so that's how it works so you can also uh, customize the validation errors so if you have a different validation key you can also pass in whether you want to show the errors or not and preserving the scroll behavior and all the other stuff so these are all uh, given in the documentation and okay the edit page now works fine so let's go ahead and work on the update part so it's going to be same as the create function so what i also want to do here is i want to implement the validation classes so artisan make request update student request and what are we going to do in here okay let's do that let's define that class import and we are also going to get the student model and we can update the student in here so student update request validated and also return redirect route to the index page okay i think we also need to work on the student a class id just like we did for the create page so we can actually copy that and paste that in here and we also need the class again a section data again so we can copy that code paste that here and this should now work okay we haven't defined the request class so this is gonna be auth check and later i might work on implementing rows and permissions in this it's gonna be pretty simple i won't be using any packages under or anything of that kind so that's gonna be uploaded later so stay in for that as well and okay let's go ahead and copy this the rules from this class itself and we can implement the ignore property as well so okay we don't have any unique okay we do have that so now what we can do here is okay we can reference that like this so this student id and the property is gonna be id okay okay this should work i'm not really sure whether this was the rule of, of syntax for the unique but if there are any issues then we'll fix that okay let's go ahead and test this out update the class and section for this and okay everything else so let's try out 
updated and let's click on submit okay the post method is not supported okay i think we need to pass that method property as well in here so inside edit the method is gonna be put and let's try it out once again okay there's some reloading related issues in here maybe that would be fixed in the future but for now it creates some problem while working with the local environment so let's click on submit okay column not found column 91 okay i think we are it's a mistake so maybe we can remove the this id part and this should be here i guess students id okay let's omit that and see and we'll look into the docs if we have any issues so i'm only gonna update the class and section okay we still have that error so what i am gonna do is i'm gonna open up the validation docs okay i think this also provides some auto completion for us so if we pass in that unique then the table is gonna be students the column is gonna be id and then the accept id so now we can pass that this student id and this should work okay let's go ahead and test this out let's click on edit and let's update the class and section okay that seems to work now i'm not really sure which data i updated i think inside page 7 i updated this data okay that seems to work so the edit functionality is also working now and the next step that i want to do is i want to implement the delete feature so let's go ahead and do that okay so let's work on the delete button here and let's implement that so for that what we are going to do is we'll be using the form form actions so since we are going to make a delete request to the server so we'll be using forms for that and what i'm going to do is i'll just copy this form and paste that in here so after delete i want to display this delete button so after edit i want to display the delete button and we don't need the default the method is going to be delete and students dot destroy we are also going to pass the student model and okay we also need a button right so for the button what we can do is we can use the submit component so we have that in here so x plate submit and we can also pass in the spinner the label is gonna be submit or delete so let's go ahead and do that so x plate submit label is gonna be delete spinner okay let's enable spinner okay i think we don't need to enable the spinner because this is gonna render a delete button actually so i don't want to do that so let's go ahead and, and implement our own button so for that what i'm going to do is okay we can also pass in some custom classes to this but that's not going to work in our case so i'll just copy and paste the button okay so let me just paste that and the button is going to be text bold text in depot 600 type is going to be submit the label is going to be delete and okay now if we try to reload then as you can see we have a simple delete button and maybe we can also pass that text indigo 600 to this component as well so that we have some uniform design system and we can also pass in some extra attributes to the form if we go ahead and check that out in the form okay i think inside link we have that not really sure okay explain form button okay we can pass in this confirm attribute let's see let's try to paste that in here and when we click on the delete then we are will we we can see our confirmation dialog if we click on cancel nothing happens if we click on confirm okay we don't have that destroy controller so let's go ahead and define that and you can also define the form request and all the other stuff in here you are already familiar with this thing at this point so i'm not going to do that so we are going to receive that student model and let's delete that and redirect 
to the student.index with success and student deleted successfully message. So let's try this out. Let's click on delete, click on confirm. And now as you can see, we are redirected to the index page. And let's see whether we have the 91, okay, 101, we do have that, okay. Let's try to delete the ID one. Okay, that seems to work. So that's done and in the next part what i want to do is i want to work on the bulk actions feature and we will be implementing bulk excel exports so see you guys in the next one okay it's now time to work on the students export feature and we'll be uh, exporting the data to an excel file so for that we would be needing a package called mat website excel so i think we i do have that auto completion enabled so mat website excel so let's hit enter and while that is installing what i want to do is i want to give you a brief overview of that so we have an export section inside the table component and this route is already uh, registered for us if you have uh, if you had done that manual uh, automatic installation so you don't have to do anything and to configure the export you may enable the exporting with the export method so okay we can also pass in some extra values like the file name type label and you can also customize the export and okay we also have one more thing called export as so what i want to do is i want to disable the export for the actions column so inside students what i want to do is i want to pass that to the actions column so export as false i want to export other columns but i don't want to export this so for that you can pass that export as and what do we have okay you can customize the record behavior so you can append some values and all the other stuff and you can also pass in the export format so yeah you can do a lot of uh, some stuff uh, some level of customization so let's go ahead and implement the export feature here so let's call the export function and we don't have to do anything else and about installing the mad website excel package so that is also mentioned in here so it uses this package under the hood so now let's go ahead and test this thing so we have implemented the export function and let's reload okay excel export we don't have the option to select any of the records that should be available but it's not okay we do have a bulk actions feature so we'll be implementing the delete bulk delete feature in the future videos but for now let's go ahead and try this thing so excel exports and so what this does is it's going to export all of the records so later we'll be implementing a custom bulk action so we can select the records and then only export those selected records so i think we can actually disable this thing but that's fine i want to show you the uh, export feature as well so that's it for this part and in the next part we'll be implementing bulk delete feature and in the further videos i'll be i will be implementing the excel export for the selected records so i'll see you guys in the next one okay so in this video we are gonna work on implementing bulk actions and delete the records that we that the user selects so let the user delete the records uh, by selecting multiple items so for that uh, let's go to the documentation and check out the bulk actions feature so that's inside the table component and then bulk actions and okay we do have this bulk action feature so what i am going to do is i'm going to copy this code actually because okay we do have some confirmation dialogues and all the other stuff so we can copy this and then customize that or remove the stuff that we don't need so before the export what i want to do is i want to implement the bulk action and the label is gonna be delete selected students and each so what this does is it's gonna iterate over each of the records and then perform the operation so in this case in our case it's gonna be student record 
and the name is going to be okay i'm going to name it student and here we want to implement the delete function and confirm is going to be are you sure you want to delete the selected students so i'm using copilot to generate that and okay we don't need confirm text confirm button is going to be delete and cancel button is going to be cancel and we also have some hooks in here i guess so, so the after and before hooks so we'll be looking into that as well okay where was that yeah we have that here so let's start by testing this thing and then we'll look into that so let's select record two and three so let's click on the settings icon and delete selected students are you sure you want to delete the students click on delete and then as you can see the number two and three records are deleted i also want to show our post notification about the status so what we can do is we can hook into that after function so we can pass that toast to the after uh, parameter so let's go ahead and do that so after function toast let's import that toast from components okay it's not components there's that it should be facades then okay toast info students deleted successfully again let's try it out so for and then click on delete selected students click on delete okay students delete successfully so that's also working fine now okay that's it for this part and in the next part we will be looking at exporting the records let's see how we are going to implement that because we have we have to pass that each function and then to each we are implementing the action to each of the models so we need a way to store the student id in an array and then we'll perform the export action so let's go ahead and do that in the next video okay so in the previous video i mentioned that uh, we will be implementing the bulk actions uh, for the excel export and i tried it myself and found that there's no proper or uh, optimized way to implement that because uh, currently the api implemented uh, in splayed only provides us with a single record at a time it doesn't provide all the, all of the selected records so for that reason there's no proper way to uh, export the selected records and if you've noticed uh, the way we are deleting the records this is also not an optimal way because for each of the records it is uh, making a query to the database so this is also not a good solution but maybe in the future uh, the api might improve and maybe in the future we can implement uh, these features in a proper way so i'm skipping that for now instead uh, in this video what we'll be working on is displaying the class and section data so we only have the student data in here so i want to display the class and section data and in the further videos we'll be implementing the filters and all the other stuff so here what we can do is to display the class data you can we can use the column notation so first let's display the class relationship so the name so the class here is the relationship name and the column that i want to display is name and the same for the section so section dot name so let's go ahead and reload and we should see the class and section data and what i also want to do here is i want to import i want to install the debug bar package and maybe we need to implement some optimization or eager loading so that uh, our database queries are optimized so let's go ahead and reload and there's probably some eager loading or n plus one issues going on in here okay we don't see any issues maybe uh, internally played uh, eager loads the data so that's fine we don't have to do anything so that's it for this part maybe this got a bit shorter so maybe i should also implement the select filter in this video itself so we have select filters available for the table component so we can apply the filters so you can check out the documentation but what i am gonna do is i'll just uh, go ahead and paste the code and then explain to you so what we are gonna do is we will implement a filter to filter the students data by class 
so let's go ahead and do that so inside vs code what i'm going to do is just like we have the bulk actions and exports we can pass in a select filter value and the key is going to be class id so by which value do we want to filter the data so this is available in the student record as class id so that's the reason this is class id and the options are going to be all of the classes data and we are plugging the name and id and then converting that to an array the label is going to be filtered by class no filter option is true so this means that uh, by default we don't want to apply any filters and the label is going to be all classes so all these records will be displayed by default when no filter is applied so let's go ahead and reload and now as you can see we have a filter icon and when we click on it we'll see a filter by class label and all classes and if i click on class 3 then as you can see the data is filtered by that specific class so this feature is also implemented in the next part let's work on the avatar feature so we'll let the user to upload the image and we'll display that in the index page and so on so let's go ahead and do that so in this video we'll be looking at file uploads in split and we'll be uploading an avatar for the student so for that let's go to the documentation and check out the file component provided by split so inside the form you can use the file component passing in the name let's also see the other options that are available to us we can also enable the image preview we can use file pond and what else do we have validating we can uh, validate and validate the image in the component code itself and okay we can also get remote files from a certain url so maybe uh, one of the options could be we can let the user enter the url and then from that url we can fetch that so yeah a simple demo has been given here and there's also an option about asynchronous uploads and a lot of stuff but we'll be implementing this in a simple way once you get an idea about this then you can maybe move further uh, to advanced topics so let's go ahead and first include the file component and what i want to do is okay let's copy this component and place that inside the create page okay we have that here so let's go to the create page and after the select option let's place that file component the name is going to be avatar we are also going to use file pond let's also uh, implement the minimum size okay that's all up to you how do you want to implement it but i want to keep it i want to keep it 50 kbs and let's give a max size of 2 mb and i also want to enable the preview feature and what else do we have and we also have the validation so let's also do that validating the this one there was an accept prop that we can pass where was that okay, let's search accept okay here we have that so accept image or png so let's also add that okay now let's test this thing out go to the browser it already reloaded let's click on create okay the design looks a bit bad so let's add some classes to this margin top of five to keep the things uniform and let's reset because we have some filters applied in here it won't really matter but still okay let's click on create and we can choose a file and maybe on the designing part it's all up to you how you want to customize it okay yeah the file pond code actually executed later and now it looks a bit better so where do i have some pictures okay maybe i don't have that in here okay let's select this image let's select that and that preview is also now visible to us so the file size is 51 kb so yeah that's just above the validation so let's work on storing the image so that's what be done on the controller side so let's go to the student controller and i also want to implement some server side validation so we should not rely on client side validation at all so we should always implement the server side validation so for that we have a student 
store student request class and let's implement the validation so avatar let's see what github copilot suggests now level image max 1024 so i think we are gonna apply the image validation and since we have the image in null level that's fine for now the use case for you could be different so i'm just implementing a simple one and let's work on the controller part now so we have the section we are creating the data and let's get the avatar so we can get that using request file avatar let's also get the name so we can get that using avatar get client original name yeah you can use that let's go ahead and dd these two and name we won't actually need the name i guess maybe we should uh, use the hash name we have that property yep so that we can randomly generate that name to avoid some collisions with the existing images or records so okay let's test this thing this should work some name email address the phone number is populated let's select a section click on submit and okay we get that hash name and also the file so that is working and by the way what we can also do is we can use some service classes and some patterns of that kind to keep our controllers clean so that's all up to you how you want to implement that so storing the files and uh, dealing with file uploads uh, that's a totally different topic in laravel and in web apps in general so i'm just giving uh, giving you an overview about dealing with these splayed components so file upload components so we are going to implement this in a simple way so here we get the file and we also get the name okay so we can use the storage facade to store our file and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it inside public avatars and the file is actually avatar and that's going to store it inside the public folder and inside avatars so we need to update the avatar column field in the student model as well so what we can do is along with class id we can store the avatar data and that's going to be a related path so we'll store that inside storage avatars and then the name of the image so that's going to create a related path for us and then we can later use the asset function to access the files directly once we link our storage folder to the public folder so let's go ahead and test this thing out and we'll work on displaying the image in the later parts so let's go ahead and okay maybe we can reload this thing but let's create a new student with a value of some name some mail phone number and let's select that file again and hit submit okay this seems to work and okay we haven't implemented the toast message in here so that's why we didn't see any messages let's go ahead and log in and check out our database okay i think we have that inside users okay we don't have that avatar in here okay i think i was working on some other stuff in here so that's the reason we don't have that data so what i'm gonna do is i'll just migrate a fresh migrate fresh the data and then seed it and we also have the seeders so that means this should work and now we can test this thing so let's again click on browse and now we don't have that avatar in here okay inside students actually so we have that avatar as null so let's go ahead and try it once again unauthenticated okay we were locked out because we just migrated the data and we don't have a user so maybe we should also define a new user seeder but that's fine let's go ahead and register a new user admin admin at the rate okay not this register and now let's test it out okay i'm gonna select an image and then finally test it out one last time hopefully 
and we are redirected to the index page so let's go ahead and test this thing and i think we can do some sorts in here some sort of sorting okay by id okay how did that work out so we have that okay we have an okay we have a temporary file directory in here okay i think i found the issue we are using the request validated and then again using the avatar so request validated already consists of the avatar property because we are also using the we are also validating the image so that could be the reason so i think we have what we can do is we can pass these above the request validated so one of the ways could be this and this should work so i'm just making some workarounds in here so the most optimal way to implement this would be instead of uh, passing in the request validated you can pass in all the records one by one so maybe i should do that let's go ahead and do that so we can pass in the name that's gonna be request name what else do we have we have the email we have the phone number and we are already okay we don't have that okay that's the only field we need so this should now work properly okay let's also bring this up and it looks a bit so that it looks cleaner and okay that should work now so let's go ahead and try this thing out so let's click on create and i'm not really sure why it's only always redirecting to this directory because i already selected this folder earlier so it should remember that but it's not working okay let's select that image and click on submit okay this has been already taken so again click on submit and accessing out okay this resets the sort okay and now as you can see we have a full path for storage avatars and then the image name so that looks good so in the next part we will be working on displaying the data so image data on the table and also work on populating the edit page with that image so see you guys in the next one so let's work on displaying the avatar data in the table so just like we did for the actions we can implement um, this feature in the same way so let's go to the students table and by the way i think i didn't zoomed in in the previous video so that might have troubled you a bit so i have fixed that uh, from this video onwards so here we have we are passing the actions and then rendering uh, these actions in the bleed file so we are going to use the same approach and instead of actions let's call it avatar and we are also going to disable the export so that uh, uh, we don't include that in the excel file or whatever format you're using so this is done and let's go to the index.blade inside students actions so just like we have the actions we can also display the avatar so instead of actions it's going to be avatar and we also want the student record and instead of all of these what i want to do is i want to display a simple image data and i think we can use this so source is going to be student avatar but not student avatar actually but asset and then student avatar because now it's going to point to the public folder and then create a relative path for this all this is going to be student name that's fine w10 s10 and rounded full that also looks good so we need to link the storage path and let's go ahead and test uh, check whether we have the images in here app public avatars okay we have those images so that looks good and let's run the storage link command so that it creates a sim link to our public folder from the storage folder the storage avatars and we have that so let's go ahead and test this thing out let's click on reload okay we don't see that avatar let's see what error we have in here okay maybe because these records uh, any of these records don't have any avatar so we should implement a check in here so let's wrap this inside uh, an if tag so if we have 
the student avatar value only then we want to render its image tag so now only the images that are available for that student are going to be displayed and what i also want to do is i want to display this avatar inside okay we don't have that right okay i think we should implement that from the table class itself so i don't want to display this at the end but somewhere in here so after phone number so let's reload this and we have an avatar for the recently created record and still okay it got rendered in here so this one has some value but the image path is not correct for this but this one has image and the path is also correct so this is being displayed so in rendering the avatar is now working and let's also implement the edit functionality so i want to display the currently uh, available avatar for this record on the edit page as well so let's look into that okay so let's start by rendering that split component first so that's inside create.blade and i am guessing that it would work by default because our avatar is okay maybe it won't work because we also need to pass that asset function so let's go ahead and that is up after this plate select so let's pass that and so let's go ahead and check this thing and maybe we need to fix some issues in here okay this thing is working by default so that's really impressive because i implemented this earlier uh, while i was trying uh splayed i had to make some uh fixes to display this thing but this thing is working and is displayed by default so i'm really impressed and one more thing that i forgot to mention here is about the update part actually i only work on displaying the image in the edit page but we didn't work on the update part so i'll just give you an overview about how we can work on that so we already did the create part so we already have that name attribute and if we have the image then we can update we can uh, perform the update part so what we can do here is just like with the store part we can grab this code and along with this so inside an if condition what we can do is if we have that file so if request has filed this avatar okay this avatar then we can execute this code and then for the name okay not for the name but we can update the avatar if we have the file so you can definitely implement that yourself so just wanted to give, uh, give you an idea about how we can work on that and since uh, i'm guessing that you, you are already familiar with laravel so you are also familiar with the edit and update part for the files so that should be simple and okay that's it that's all i wanted to say so i think we are quite done for this series there uh, might be a few issues here and there so let's see i am thinking of creating a new series about working with rules and permissions in splayed so i'll probably use this project as a starting point and then move along from there so that's it for this part and if there are any issues to be fixed then i'll fix them in the upcoming series that i that i'll be recording um by continuing from this project so that's it for this series and i'll see you guys in the next one okay so before we get started i want to give you a brief overview about the database for the rules and permission and also we will work on defining the models and migrations and seeders for these models and in the and the further videos we'll work on implementing these in the project itself so let's start with the database overview so we'll have a roles table and it's, it's going to be a simple one so an id and a title and same for permissions so it's going to have an id and title so title means the name for the permissions and we are going to have a permission underscore role pivot table so to connect the permission and role because a role can have 
many permissions so belongs to relationship actually it belongs to many relationship because a role can belong to multiple permissions and a permission can also belong to multiple roles so this pivot table is going to store that and we are also going to have a role user pivot table because a user can have multiple roles so we are going to store that using this pivot table so you can use any uh, package to implement uh, this thing so you don't have to deal with uh, database and migrations and all the other stuff but i'm going to implement it without using any packages so that's also one of the reasons why i'm giving you an overview so let's go ahead and define the models migrations and serial for this and i'll explain to you what uh, each of the files does so i'm not going to code it from scratch but i'll just give you an overview so inside the models as uh, as we have discussed earlier we are going to have three models so we are introducing three models so permissions roles and okay we already have users so permissions and roles so let's go ahead and paste that in here okay i'm just gonna paste that so the role and permission and the fillable and all the relationship is also defined in here so roles belongs to many role class and the same for the role model as well and we need to define one more relationship inside the user so this will throw an error if we while trying to see the database so let's go ahead and define the roles relationship so this belongs to many role class so this is going to be implemented using the pivot table so defining the models is done so let's go ahead and define the migrations for these so as we have discussed earlier so we are going to introduce two new models for roles and permissions and two new pivot tables or permission role and then role user so let's go ahead and check these out one by one we have a single column for title or the role and permissions and for the permission and role we are going to have two columns so one is going to be for an id and another one is role id and we are also cascading them so whenever we delete any of the permission on or role then we'll delete these records as well and the same applies for the role user pivot table as well so this is also simple so this is done and the next step is to define the seeders so i'll just copy and paste them as well so we are gonna have five seeders and i'll walk you through each of them one by one so the first one is permissions table seeder here we have permissions as the name says as the table name suggests so we are going to define the permissions for role and then the student i'm not going to define the permissions for the permissions crud itself because we won't be uh, implementing the permissions crud because um, defining the permissions for the resources that's done by in the code level itself so so letting the user uh, create the permissions on the admin side would make any sense because we also have to implement them manually in the code side so we have a uh, role crud so role create edit show delete and access and the same for the students as well and what else do we have okay we also have role table seeder so we'll be seeding two roles by default one is going to be admin and the other one is going to be user and we have a user stable seeder so we'll be seeding two users one is going to be admin and the other one is going to be user and we also have three seeders for the okay two seeders i guess for the pivot tables so one is the permission role so first we are defining a admin permission where we are grabbing all the permissions and then we are grabbing the first role which is the admin and then using the permissions relationship and then using the sync method we are passing in all the admin permissions and for the user permission what we are doing is we are only giving the user the access to students so using the same approach we are finding the role with the id of two and using the permissions relationship and then passing in the user permissions so this is also simple and the last one is role user table seeders so we implemented the relationship for permissions and role 
so we also need to implement the same for role and user so we are grabbing the first user which is the admin and then giving it admission admin role and then we are also grabbing the user from the database and then giving it the role of id2 which is the user role so that actually sums up the roles and permission seeder and the last thing that we need to do is call these in the database seeder so i am gonna again paste the command or the code for the seeders so we are calling the seeders one by one first we are call so the sequence also matters because we are first going to create the users and then we are creating the permissions and then creating the roles so up till here we don't have any dependencies they are all independent seeders and after that we have the permission role table seeder so these so this seeder depends on permission and then role and we are also calling the role user table seeder so this seeder depends on the role table seeder and the user table seeder so now it's finally time to test this thing so let's go ahead and call the artisan migrate fresh and then seed the database so let's hit enter and this should work okay that seems to work let's go ahead and test it out in the database so let's reload it once and let's test these tables one by one so let's check out users and we should have two users one is admin and the other one is user we have permissions so all the permissions that we define in the seeder are created and we have roles so we should have two roles admin and user and the pivot tables should also work fine so permission 1 to 10 is given to role id 1 and 10 is given to role id 2 and one more we have that is role user so 1 1 and 2 2 so these seem to work fine and we are done for this part and in the next part we will be working on crud of roles so in the first part we'll be working on displaying the roles data and then in the further videos we'll implement the crud and later we'll implement the permissions implementation so that's gonna be an interesting one so that's it for this part and i'll see you guys in the next one let's work on displaying the roles data in a table so just like we did for the students, we are going to display the roles data in this video. And in the further videos, we'll be working on creating the roles, editing the roles, deleting the roles, and implementing the permissions and all the other stuff. So let's go ahead and define a new roles table. So inside my terminal, I'm going to run the artisan make table. And OK, I already have that role. So let's hit enter. And let's go to the roles table now so inside tables we have that and we already have some data populated like the role model so i think we can use the students table and implement some stuff from here so i want the id and name but i think for roles it's title so let's go ahead and update that and what else do we have okay i think that's the only Thing we need for the roles so let's save this and the next thing that i want to do is let's go to the web.php and define that route and we don't have the role controller so let's create that artisan make controller ro role controller let's hit enter and we can use that in here so it's actually roles we don't have to pass in the name and this is already imported because we are passing in the full namespace so that's done and what else do we have okay let's go to the controller and what do we want to do we can make use of the student controller because why not we don't want to type everything so we can pass that okay we don't have the index function so let's copy it along with the index function let's paste that and it's actually roles and maybe we can edit multiple of these so roles or index the key is going to be roles and the class is roles class let's import this and we don't have the view file so let's go ahead and 
define that as well so inside views we want roles slash index dot blade dot php okay and we can make use of the index page from students so i'll just copy this and paste that in here and let's update this so i think we can directly update all of these at once and the only difference here is for this one so i'll just update that individually so roles list and we are going to use the slide over component and here it's actually maybe instead of create i think it uh, the add role sounds better roles start create explain table for roles slot empty that looks good and we don't need this and actions okay maybe we can make use of this so for the role we are gonna define two links so one is gonna be the edit and the other one is the delete form so these route actually exist because we define the resource route so they are not gonna throw any errors and what else do we have okay we haven't defined the actions in the table class itself so let's go ahead and do that so they are inside okay they are here so define that in the table class actions what else do we need okay this looks good let's save this and inside role controller you can also save this so let's go ahead okay one more thing that our that we need to do here is the navigation which is inside layouts let's go ahead and copy this and by the way there's also one more navigation link which is for the mobile menu so the responsive menu which is down in here yep that's here so if you are changing that you also need to make some changes in here so here what we are doing is we are going to the roles.index so let's go ahead and update that and this is actually roles and this should work so let's go ahead and reload and let's also reset this because we are on the page 7 let's click on roles and we see the roles so that looks good so we need to work on the edit and delete so we'll do that in the next video okay let's work on storing the roles data so we'll be storing the role data along with the permissions and because it's obvious that a role will have permissions associated with it so we'll let the user select the permissions and then store the data accordingly so let's go ahead and create a new create page so i think we can copy this page and paste that directly in here and maybe we can make use of some components from here so the route is gonna be roles.store create a new role and the form looks good and we have the action in the model itself so what i want to do is i want to move that to the form because that's what the general behavior should be so actions are associated with forms and we have the input for name so this is actually title and the label is gonna be title and we don't need these we'll need a split select and the name is gonna be permissions and since we are letting the users uh, select multiple permissions so this is gonna be an array and one more thing that i recently found out was we can uh, instead of passing in a default value like this what we can do is we can pass in a placeholder so this will internally create that for us so we can pass in select permissions and here what we want to do is we want to loop over the permissions so we haven't we don't haven't defined the permissions yet from the controller side so we'll do that in a minute so here what we want to do is we want to display the permission data and the value is going to be permission id and here instead of class name it's actually title and we can remove this so that's the only thing we need we can remove the file upload component exploit submit and we can also pass in the spinner i think it's called spinner equals to true maybe i need to double check that 
okay so this should be binded like this so that it actually evaluates to true instead of a string value and what else do we have okay this looks good from the view side let's go ahead to the controller to implement that so let's create a create method to render the view so return view roles dot create okay we also need the permissions data so per missions is going to be permission all let's import the model and let's pass in the permissions okay let's go ahead and test this thing out and maybe okay i think we have done that already so we have defined the route we have also defined the link over link component along with the slide over prop passed in so let's test it out now let's click on add role and okay this looks good so i think the placeholder thing didn't work out in here because i can't see it maybe we need to check out the documentation so where's that select okay i can't find that okay inside form components the select component and we can pass in the options the label we can pass in as a slot okay we also want them to uh, select multiple items because a role can have multiple permissions let's pass that multiple value placeholder okay we have that placeholder but i think we should pass it inside split select yep we are doing that maybe i have made some spelling mistakes so i'll just copy that from here and paste that okay that looks good and what else do we have okay so one more thing that we have here is a relation prop so what this does is it will populate the select component automatically so in cases like uh, in edit pages where we want to populate the select component so in that case this is going to be really helpful so we'll use that later and so we can also you integrate the choices js so just by passing in the choices value i think somewhere it was okay yep here we have that so we can pass in the choices attribute or prop and that will give us a nice choice functionality so improved ui let's go ahead and test this out so let's click on add role and okay now as you can see we have the select permissions we can also pass in the placeholder for the title and okay this has some issues i'm not really sure why maybe the issues with the split component itself so we can pass in a label for this so when we click on the label then it is going to open up properly so as you can see when i click on okay now it worked out so sometimes it does and sometimes okay when we click on this then it works and when i click somewhere here then it's not working maybe i should remove the placeholder and let's also cut the label for now and let's see if this works okay same issue so i'll just pass that placeholder and also pass that label so select permissions let's click on add role and it's still not working but when i click on the label then it opens up properly so we can now select multiple items and assign the permissions to a certain role so the create page looks good and now it's time to work on the controller part so let's go to the controller and define the store method so we'll also implement validations in here so let's define that first so artisan make request store role request so let's import that in here and let's define the permissions here so for now what we'll do is we'll just pass in a default value of true so that all the authorization checks pass by default and later we'll implement a proper authorization check so whether a certain user has proper permissions to update the resource or not so we'll implement that later once we implement the rules and permissions properly so let's keep that for now and for the rules what i'm going to do is i'll just copy in paste the rules and explain to you so here what uh, what i want to do is for the title 
the rules are required string and max 255 the permissions is going to be in array of uh, permissions and it's required and for the individual permissions what i want to do is it's going to be required and it's going to be an integer type and should exist in the permissions table so that's the default permissions that i want to implement so now let's go and create the role so the role is going to be role create and the title request title and i also want to sync the permissions so instead of attach let's sync it so let's import the model and we are sync we are performing the sync task and now we can return the user to the role sort index and this is not yet implemented we'll implement that later so we need to implement the toast for that so maybe in the next video i'll do that and oh yeah this should now work let's go ahead and test this thing out so the title is gonna be let's see some title i'm gonna delete this in a while so let's click on submit and okay we have that role created and to test out whether the permissions were added properly or not we can check out the role underscore permission okay permission underscore role and okay we have role id3 and these permissions that are applied to it so that seems to work so okay this much for this video and in the next part we'll work on editing the record so that should be fairly simple as well so i'll see you guys in the next one okay let's work on the edit part so that should be fairly simple as well so let's go to the create page and i want to copy everything from here and create a new file called edit.blade.php and we can paste that let's update this to edit role we can also pass in the name in here so it is role title and it's gonna be this route is gonna be roles.update and we also need to pass in the role model so we have the title and permissions in here so these are all gonna be synced by default because we are gonna pass a default prop in here so the default is gonna be role so these are all covered in the previous videos so you can check them out and you can also check the documentation for that it's all available in the documentation and for to populate the permissions data what we can do is let's first test it out without uh, passing in the relations array and see what's uh, how it looks like and then we'll implement that later so the edit page looks good for now let's go to the controller and implement the edit page so let's define we can set up uh, defining the edit i think we can just copy the create page and make changes so instead of create it's going to be edit and we want to go to the edit page and we also want to pass in the permissions so let's test it out now so i'll just reload it once because we made some changes to the controller and yes sir, uh, and we also added a blade file so maybe it reloaded in the background so okay undefined variable role because we didn't implement the root model binding and we also need to pass that role so let's check it out once again let's click on edit and now as you can see the admin data is populated but the permissions data is not so to populate that what we need to do is we need to pass in the relation prop maybe uh, these are internally passed in as props so that's what i'm referring to so let's save this and test it out click on edit and now as you can see the role data is populated automatically so you don't have to do anything it all works and that's really great so let's work on the update part now so this should be also similar to the store so we can copy that and instead of store it's gonna be update and let's rename this to update and we are also gonna use the root model binding in here and instead of role create it's gonna be role update 
and we don't have to assign that and now we can also perform the sync task and redirect the user to the index page okay we don't have the update role request so let's go ahead and define that so artisan make request update role request let's import that and okay let's go to that class pass the true value by default and the rules maybe we can make use of the store role request so let's go ahead and apply the same rules for the update class as well you can define the unique and all the other validation stuff as per your needs i'm just keeping it simple so this should now work okay we have done that we are also updating the data we are we are also performing the sync for the permissions and redirecting the user okay what i also want to do here is i want to implement the toast because we haven't talked about it yet so okay i think we have a default of title role update is successfully and we can get rid of this okay it should work maybe role details updated let's test it out okay so let's remove all of these permissions and let's update this role now okay click on submit okay i made a mistake we need to pass in the method as put instead of post so inside form the method is gonna be put let's save that and reload and click on edit and maybe i'll just remove some of these so that we'll know that we actually updated it click on submit and as you can see we also have that post visible now again uh, let's click on edit and i think i updated the admin section yep so i want to apply all of these to the admin and let's test it out one last time okay that looks good so the update thing is also working now so in the next part we'll work on deleting the records and in the further videos we'll be working on implementing the roles and all the other stuff so see you guys in the next one okay let's implement the rolled deletion part so this is something that we have implemented already and you should be really familiar with this by now so we have the delete button in here which goes to the roles.destroy passing in the role model and the method is delete and we also want to confirm the action so this looks good and we also we only need to implement that on the controller side so let's define that destroy method and what i also want to do is i want to define a new request class in here so let's do that so artisan make request destroy role request let's define that and let's import that in here destroy role request request and we also get the role so let's implement this class so for now we are passing in a default value of true and here what we want to do okay we, maybe we don't want to do anything in here because we are only validating the authorization part so that only the authorized user is able to delete the roles we don't need any validations in here because we are getting that role from the route itself so this looks good and let's delete the role and redirect the user to the role sort index and let's also implement the toast so toast with the title of role deleted successfully so let's save this and test it out now so let's click on edit and we click on cancel nothing happens and when i click on confirm the role should be deleted okay that looks good so the crowd of roles is finally done and in the next part what we'll be working on is we'll define the gates for the permissions uh, that a certain role has so what we'll do is we'll just get the all of the roles for us on uh, the currently authenticated user and then define the gates 
for the permissions so we'll do that in the next video so i'll see you guys in the next one let's work on defining the gates for the roles for this uh, currently authenticated user so what we are going to do is define a middleware and register that middleware in the kernel so which is going to execute uh, through every request and then we'll check for the authorization accordingly so first let's go ahead and define a new middleware so artisan make middleware and i'm going to name it register auth gates so let's hit enter and let's first register this middleware in our kernel which is inside app http and i want to register it inside web middleware because i want to run that middleware on every request so here let's call that register gates class so that's done and let's go to the middleware okay let's remove everything from here and let's go to that middleware so register auth gates so here what we want to do is we are going to grab the user and we can use the request user or you can also use the auth user it's going to give the same user for this case and we also want to load the relationships so in this case it's uh, roles and then permissions and load missing so what this does is in some cases where you are applying the eager loading constraints maybe in the user model itself so in that case the relationships could be loaded so if the relationships are already loaded then in that case this function is not going to do anything it won't run any additional queries but if the relationships are not loaded then it is going to actually load when we call this function so that's done and we also need to check whether we have the authenticated user or not because this uh, request or this middleware is going to execute on every request so even on non-authenticated requests like in the login or other pages this is going to execute so we need to check whether we have the authenticated user or not so if we have the user then what we are going to do is so we are going to loop over each of the roles because our user can have multiple roles so we need to take care of that so user roles as role and here what we are going to do is we are also going to grab the roles permissions of the roles so we can do for okay maybe for each each role permissions as let's name it single permission and what do we want to do here is we want to store the permission in an array so we can do that like this single permission okay it's not name actually but title and this is equal to okay, let's test this thing out what do we get at this point so let's dd permission and this is a single n not double n so let's go ahead and reload and we should see all of the permissions for that specific user so currently authenticated user has all of these permissions and what do we want to do after that so i want to collect all of the permissions and i'm gonna call in the unique method because if we have multiple roles then the permissions can overlap or there can be duplicate permissions because of multiple roles so we want to get the unique roles uh, permissions from here and then we want to match a map over again not map over but we want to go over each of the permission and then define a gate so this is implemented already so maybe we can make some changes in here and i'll explain to you what this co code does so we have a okay maybe we should call this permissions and permission looks good okay so we are collecting the permissions and getting the unique items from that collection and then to each of the permission what we are doing is we are defining the gate for this and let's import this and the type is facades gate so we are defining the permission with this specific name so here what's going to happen is role create role edit role show so all of these 
names are so all of these are gonna, gonna be defined in new gate and we do get the user but we can what we can do is here we can directly pass in true because since we are already grabbing the permissions using the user roles so we don't have to worry about the condition in here so we can directly define the gate and not passing the uh, second argument this will give us an error so we have to pass that so if i try to save this and reload then we'll get an error about the second argument so as you can see we have the two fewer arguments function to get defined so we have to pass that closure and we can pass in the default rule because we are grabbing the user roles from the user model itself so that should work now so if we now go ahead and reload then i have the debug bar installed and okay we don't have the gates in here so we should there should be some issues probably okay for some reason the gates are not been displayed in here and maybe later when we implement the authorize and checks in the controller and front end they would be displayed and so this looks uh, fine from my side so maybe if we have some issues in the future then we'll fix them accordingly so we'll implement up to this for now and in the next part we'll be working on implementing the authorize and checks on the back end side so on the controllers and in the further videos we'll implement that on the front end so checking those checks on the blade side so that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one it's time to implement the authorization checks on the back end side that is on the controllers and request classes and in the further videos we'll work on implementing those checks in the front end side so before doing that what i want to cover here is in the request in the middleware what we are doing is we are grabbing the user so if we are okay let's try to log out once then as you can see we get an error that call to a member function load missing on nulls so at this point we don't have the request user anymore so to fix that what we can do is we can pass in the null parameter if this value is null then this won't be executed so this should fix the error and let's try to reload then that error is now fixed so let's log in and now try to implement the auth check so let's start with the controllers so here what we are going to do is we are going to pass in the this authorize method and then we can pass the permission name so in this case for the index what we have defined is we have defined a student access okay let's check it out from the permission they will see there and yep that's the student access and now when we pass this only if the user has the proper authorization for this name only then they will be allowed to access the page or they will be allowed to view the student's record so let's save this and go ahead and click on the student's link and for now uh, what we are doing is we are logging in through the admin pro profile and this user has access to all of the resources in our system so that's the reason this thing is working so let's go ahead and implement the same for other functions as well so i'll just okay maybe we can use github copilot for this so for uh, this create method the name is student create and the same for store method as well okay it didn't work out so i'll just copy this and paste that in here work on the edit page student edit student update is also going to be edit and last one is the destroy so this is student delete so that's done and let's also do the same for the role controller and here it's going to be role access and what we can do also do is here we can instead of passing in the this authorize we can also do abort if and then get denies so this index can also be used it's all up to you how you, how you want to do it this authorize is simple and readable as well so that's the reason i'm using that so role create and for the store we can also use the same and for the edit we can use role edit 
for the update we can also use role edit and for the destroy we can use role delete so that's done on the controller side we also need to implement the same for the request classes that i mentioned earlier so let's test this out and then we'll implement that so every page should work for this user because this user has all the permissions so the pages can be viewed as expected and next thing that we want to do here is implement the same for the request classes okay before starting one thing that i want to mention here is uh, for some reason the recording after this part got muted so i have to redo this thing so you might see some files being changed so you can ignore that and we'll work on this remaining part so to implement the authorize and checks let's go to one of the request classes and here so instead of passing in the default true what we are going to do is we are going to use the gate allows function and then so for this part since we are storing the request we will be passing in role create and we can import the gate facade so that's inside illuminate support facades let's import that and let's see i'll just copy this and we can test out how github copilot will suggest this code so inside update role request we can do the same so instead of return true we can okay i think i did copy the return part so return git allows facades and this is update okay edit yep that's good so that's done and everything else looks good and okay what else do we have inside okay we also have a destroy role request so we can override this as well gate allows okay i think i imported the wrong class so this is gate on the facades and i'm not really sure what did i call this role delete or destroy okay let's check it out so permission stable okay we have the delete naming convention so that looks fine and what else do we have okay one thing that i also want to do here is just to give you a brief idea so we have implemented the table class so we can actually implement the authorize and checks in there as well so let's go to the students table and here we have an authorize and check function provided to us so what we can do here is a simple a general use case would be to create a gate allows check in here so i'll just write that and what we can do is student student access and we can implement the same inside the roles as well so instead of student this is gonna be role and let's also import that that looks good and everything else looks good so let's test this out and this should work okay so now currently i am logged in as admin so i can add the user i can delete them i can edit okay the front end part is not yet implemented but the back end is so we can actually log out and then log in with the less permission user we have user at the rate user.com let's log in and okay let's see where have we implemented this okay, we can create the student so now as you can see we can't view that page so this action so this thing is actually working on the okay so we are displaying that form and okay, let's go to this student controller and okay we have create store so okay yeah that thing so this authorized student create so this thing is now being applied and is checking for the proper authorization so this thing is working from the back end so now we uh, what we also need to do is we need to implement that on the front end so we don't want uh, to let the any unauthorized users to see the ui parts as well so we'll do that in the next part okay let's work on implementing the authorization checks on the front end and i have my index page opened up so this is i think inside for the uh, students page so i want to implement the authorization checks in here so i only want to display this link if the user has the authorization to create the resource so what we can do is we can actually make use of the can directory and i think we have it as student create let's paste that inside the can block and now this should be properly 
checked and if the student create gate is defined only then this will be displayed so let's go ahead and implement the same for the edit and delete buttons as well so here we have the edit button so student edit let's end the can and let's also implement the same for student delete and the can let's save it and i think i'm currently logged in as the less privileged user and now as you can see i can't i don't see the create student button i don't see these actions so this thing is now working properly so let's also do one thing we can go to the students create url and now as you can see the action is unauthorized so this thing is now working on both the front end and back end so one more thing that i want to implement here is showing the navigation links so based on the user permissions so we can do that on okay where do we have that okay navigation.blade so here we can check for the permissions so we have the student create and okay we can use student access in this case since we are displaying or since we are viewing all the students data and let's end the can and let's also define the same for section okay not section but role and this should work so for now what we have is we don't have access to roles so we shouldn't see that link okay that seems to work and let's also go to that route to test it from the back end okay that seems to work and just like we have implemented for the student in the index page you can go ahead and do the same for roles and all the other cruds that you have and i hope that you totally understand how we are implementing this so that you can further work on it improve it and implement it as you want so my goal was to make you understand how these things work and i believe that i have accomplished it so yeah that's it for this series and i'll see you guys in the next one